what was your reaction today when you when you heard about the protesters' plan to make today on Parliament Hill in that sort of chaos uh, orange shirt day? It's not acceptable to take a symbol like the orange shirt and orange shirt day or even the every child matters slogan or saying and apply it to the situation that uh, I, I stand, first of all, with Phyllis Wabstead, who is the creator of the orange shirt day and the orange shirt and her denouncement of this. Uh, it's a real affront insult uh, and so disturbing that survivors, intergenerational trauma survivors, uh, and especially the little ones who did not make it out of those institutions of assimilation and genocide, it's it's really uh, it's un unbelievable that they would think that they could uh, you know attach the horrors of these institutions to their protests. They're two separate matters altogether, and it's really inappropriate for them to co-opt Orange Shirt Day or even Every Child Matters to what they're doing. In fact, when you think about what they're doing, you know, I saw a, a photo of children being used in a blockade somewhere uh, near the bridge, one of the bridges, I believe. And you know, if those were indigenous children, I can guarantee you that the children aid societies would have been down there in five minutes. The, the police would have apprehended those children and put them into care immediately. But that's not happening with these non-Indigenous protesters. It's really, it shows what we have been saying all along, that Canada, the illusion that is Canada, that Canada is this friendly, great country, that's false. It's not true. And how can we get to reconciliation when we can't even embrace the truth of the double standards in this country, the inequality, well, I, I, the injustice? And, and, and I do want to address that, uh, and, and I'm happy you're, you're, you're here because I've thought about that. What about sort of the, uh, you know, political support and the, 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 the police's support for this convoy, because back in February 2020, protesters in support of West Sudan hereditary chiefs blocked CN rail lines in parts of the country. At the time, Aaron O'Toole said if elected prime minister, he would introduce legislation to make blocking major railways, highways and bridges a criminal offense. So what do you make? You talked about a double standard. Um, so what do you make of, of that compared to the support that this convoy by those same, you know, many conservative MPs today? Look at the footage of what's Soden. Those are violent arrests. Look at the footage of Ty and Denega, uh, when the police were there to arrest those land protectors, those land defenders, those water defenders. Look at Oka. Look at Dudley George, look at all of these situations of how police respond to First Nations. It's very clear, uh, you know, and you asked the question at the beginning, Joyce, does, does, does this show a du double standards? Yes, of course, it's so obvious to everybody that Canada's racial divide and how they treat Indigenous First Nations people in this country is not the same as how they are treating these non-Indigenous protesters. The system is rigged against us. It's not, um, you know, we, we aren't respected in the same way when we are engaging in our own kinds of actions, political actions. And I, I, I'm really glad that this is being shown to the rest of Canada. I think it's important for uh, you know, all of our allies out there, and I know we have a lot of them, to look at this and say, hey, you know, this is wrong. You know, Canada isn't the place that we think it is. And what are we going to do about it? That's what we really need to start talking about is what our allies need to do in terms of getting this country moving forward on what yeah. I'm calling healing path forward. And it's, it's really dependent on the silent people who are not saying anything to begin to stand up and say, this is wrong, and we have to make this country better. Yes, and, you know, the world is watching, and, uh, yeah, the world is watching. Assembly of First Nations, uh, National Chief Roseanne Archibald, thanks for making the time to talk to us. 
Have a very nice weekend. Thank you, Joyce. Take care.